as the current testing grounds and launch site of SpaceX's massive Starship, a fully reusable rocket that very well may be the most powerful in the world, Starbase near Brownsville in South Texas attracts plenty of space enthusiasts that want to catch a glimpse of the Titanic rocket in action. But with the FAA breathing down their neck all year, fans of SpaceX that have been following the development of Starship are by now used to the first orbital launch milestones being postponed multiple times. And now SpaceX, they've just run out of patience. This is Elon Musk's genius solution to kick out the FAA on the way to his colony in Mars. Welcome back to Alpha Tech. We want to take time to thank you for your continued support of the channel. Now take a seat and we'll find out everything going on in today's episode of Alpha Tech Channel. SpaceX's Starship is getting closer to launch, but the future of its Texas Starbase is in doubt. SpaceX cleared yet another hurdle in its quest to launch Starship, the world's most powerful rocket, when the FAA, Federal Aviation Administration, granted environmental approval for orbital launches from the company's site in South Texas. The decision announced on June 13th after months of delay and debate requires several actions to ease the impact on public beaches and wildlife surrounding SpaceX's private spaceport at Boca Chica Beach, 20 miles east of Brownsville, Texas. Clearly, the ruling still represents a win for Elon Musk's space company, which could have been required to complete a much more comprehensive and lengthy environmental impact statement before any orbital launches took place. Despite the conditional approval for SpaceX, which still needs a launch license for orbital flights, the future of the rocket complex in Boca Chica Beach is less certain than it may seem. The growing facility known as Starbase has become the subject of heated debate among state and regional officials who see the site as an opportunity for economic development, environmentalists concerned about the impacts on fragile ecosystems, locals whose communities have been transformed, and SpaceX devotees with grand visions of living on Mars. For this current situation, to conduct orbital Starship flights from Texas, which would involve launching a bigger rocket than the Saturn V that took astronauts to the moon, the company would need to comply with 75 new provisions. These include limits on road closures and the creation of wildlife corridors, as well as other less conventional requirements, such as preparing a historical context report of the Mexican War. Before SpaceX obtains the final FAA license to launch its mega rocket, Especially, the document only covers 10 launches per year, five suborbital and five orbital, a limit that the company could easily run into once Starship starts flying. Adding to the pressure in Texas are legal actions by environmental groups, one suit filed and at least one more threatened. It's deja vu all over again, says Jim Chapman, a board member of the local environmental group Save RGV Rio Grande Valley, which is suing the state of Texas over the spaceport at Boca Chica. Chapman says that SpaceX wasn't ultimately required to adhere to mitigation measures when it began flight test of the smaller upper stage of Starship, and he's skeptical the FAA will fully enforce the requirements for launching the much larger Super Heavy booster. I don't see how anything's changed, is his quote. While the debate goes on, Musk has said that SpaceX plans to ultimately move Starship operations to NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida, where the company's building a new launch tower and already has all the permits required for orbital launches. The South Texas site would likely be maintained as a hub for research and development, but note that as Starship becomes operational, there'll be less need for a vibrant test program at Boca Chica Beach. Notably, a shift occurred in April of 2021 when NASA awarded SpaceX $2.89 billion to develop a version of Starship to use as the lunar landing vehicle during the first crewed return to the moon as part of the Artemis program. NASA's Space Launch System rocket and Orion capsule will carry the astronauts to lunar orbit where they will board a waiting Starship vehicle that will ferry them to the surface. This role in NASA's moonshot pushed Starship operations toward Kennedy Space Center, which is home to NASA's human spaceflight operations since it began. Work there has been ramped up during the FAA certification at Boca Chica Beach. At this point, the completion of the SpaceX orbital launch tower grows even closer in Florida. The sixth segment for the orbital launch tower at LC-39A was rolled out before being lifted into place atop the previous segment. While Segment 7 is prepared for its own role, 8 is still in preparation for the same operation. 
This takes place as construction has begun on the ninth segment. This section will hold the pulleys and mechanisms needed for the chopsticks, and it's the final section required before a cap segment would go on top. Amongst other work down at the Cape, the chopsticks continue to be assembled at Roberts Road. Mega Bay Concrete Foundations are in place. Tents have sprung up that mirror the ones in Texas where starships are built, and just like in South Texas, the foundation of a massive and permanent star factory to build even more rockets has been established. Besides, the company is working in cooperation with NASA to expand its operations at KSC or Kennedy Space Center by increasing its footprint by up to 100 acres to develop an office of facilities that would handle the following. Vehicle and payload processing, fabrication, storage, manufacturing, shipping, and receiving. SpaceX also plans to construct a roughly 1.6-mile connector road that would run from the NASA Parkway to the Roberts Road facility. One of the big reasons for this desired expansion is to make way for work on Starship, SpaceX's reusable two-stage rocket that's capable of sending more than 100 metric tons into orbit. Dan Dankert, the lead for the National Environmental Policy Act NEPA compliance at KSC said, it'll support their overall operations for the Falcon, Falcon Heavy, as well as the future of Starship consolidated into one operational area. He also shared that while there is not a one-to-one -one comparison of Starbase and KSC, some lessons can be learned regarding Starship. Considering environmental effects and impacts, I think a lot of that is relevant to thinking about and considering what potential future impacts or mitigations or things of that nature that we need to offset anything as we work toward the future here at Launch Complex 39A. In addition to the launch pad in Florida, SpaceX may attempt to conduct launches offshore in the Gulf of Mexico. In Mississippi's port of Pascagoula, two oil rigs owned by SpaceX called Phobos and Deimos after the moons of Mars, are being converted into Starship launch platforms. These platforms could host the risky launch tests that the Kennedy Space Center can't support. Over time, I think there's going to be floating spaceports, Elon Musk said in February. We've got these two converted oil rigs that are going to be turned into orbital launch sites, and they can be moved around the world. Musk idealistically envisions a thousand starships leaving Earth every two years when Earth has close encounters with Mars to facilitate humanity's first permanent migration to another planet. With such a cadence, Texas, Florida, offshore platforms, and even elsewhere may be needed to truly settle the red planet. In short, thanks to the FAA for closing the gate at Starbase, Elon Musk seems to find Starship more suitable new homes to be ready for Mars colonization flights in the near future. Well, that's all for today's video. What did you think about today's topic? Well, let us know in the comments below, and if you enjoyed the video, leave us with a like and consider subscribing for more content just like this. See you next time.